Hi students, I am Riyana MS, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Sri Narayana Institute of Technology, Adur. We are studying the subject Ground Improvement Techniques for 6th Semester Civil Engineering as per APJ KTU syllabus. We know that it is an elective subject. In the previous sessions, we have covered the 5th module of this subject. And we have studied about what is compaction, what are the factors affecting compaction, the types of compaction such as shallow compaction, deep compaction, etc. The various techniques used for shallow compaction, deep compaction, and the various field control testers for compaction, and the effect of properties, effect of compaction on the properties of soil, etc. We have studied it, hoping that you have understood the previous sessions. Now we are moving to the module 6 of this particular subject, ground improvement techniques. The sixth module deals with hydraulic modification. Hydraulic modification of soil means it is by means of dewatering and drainage. The sixth module deals with hydraulic modification of soil that is drainage and dewatering. What is hydraulic modification? Hydraulic modification is nothing but it is simply dewatering. Now what is dewatering? Dewatering is the removal of water from solid material or soil by wet classification, centrifugation, filtration or similar solid liquid separation process. That is simply dewatering is the removal of excess water from the soil. It is the process of removal of excess water from wet soil or saturated soil. The process of removal of excess water from Saturated soil or wet soil can be termed as watering and drainage. Now, dewatering action in different soils. The objective of dewatering is to modify the ground by lowering the groundwater table, by redirecting the seepage, or by simply reducing the water content of the soil mass. In case of coarse grained soils, the dewatering is achieved by lowering the ground water level by means of pumping. And in case of fine grained soils, the dewatering is achieved by means of preloading techniques or electrokinetic stabilization techniques. So, the objective of dewatering is to lower the ground water table, redirecting the seepage or to reduce the water content of the soil mass. In case of coarse grained soils, it is done by means of pumping and in case of fine grained soils, it is done by means of preloading or electrokinetic stabilization techniques. Now, the importance of dewatering. Dewatering has its importance on the following three areas. In case of ground excavation, for stabilizing foundation and for irrigation purposes. In case of ground excavation, it plays a vital role. In case of subsurface excavations, in some situations it may be dangerous due to the level of water table. Dewatering is important in case of ground excavation because it permits the excavation and construction in a relatively dry environment. The second one, stabilizing the foundation. It controls the hydrostatic pressure and seepage and thereby stabilizes the foundation. It increases the stability of the excavation slope. Dewatering can be utilized to increase the effective weight of the soil and to consolidate the soil layer. Dewatering can reduce the lateral loads on sheeting and bracings during excavation. And for irrigation purpose, the excess water is extracted from the construction site and it is also an environmental friendly option. So, this is the importance of dewatering. And next is the purpose for dewatering. Dewatering serves its purpose during the construction and after the construction. During the construction stage, the purpose of dewatering includes it provides a dry excavation and permits the construction to proceed in an effective manner. It reduces the lateral loads on sheeting and bracings in excavation. It stabilizes quick bottom conditions and prevents heaving and piping phenomena. It improves the supporting characteristics of foundation materials. It increases the stability of excavation slopes and side hill fills. It 
cut off the capillary rise and prevents the phenomena like piping and frost heaving in permanence. It reduces air pressure in tunneling operations. So during the construction stage, the dewatering is a dry excavation in the construction site. It improves the supporting characteristics of foundation materials. It increases the stability of excavation slopes and it prevents the phenomena like piping, frost heaving, etc. And it reduces the air pressure during tunneling operations. And after the construction, it serves the purposes like it reduces or eliminate the uplift pressures on bottom slabs and thereby permits the economics from the reduction of slab thickness for basement, buried structures, canal linings, spillways, dry docks, etc. It provides dry basements. It reduces the lateral pressure on retaining structures. It controls the seepage in embankments of all dams. And it controls the seepage and pore water pressure beneath the permanent side hill fills, cut slopes, etc. The purpose of dewatering during or after the construction stage is it reduces or eliminates the uplift pressure for bottom slabs of basements, buried structures, canal linings, spillways, dry rocks, etc. Reduces the lateral pressure on retaining structures. Control the seepage on embankments of dams and control seepage and pore pressures beneath the permanent side hill fills and cut slopes. Difference between construction dewatering and permanent groundwater control. What is construction dewatering? If the dewatering is done on a construction site, it can be termed as construction dewatering. If it takes place on mining sites, it can be termed as mine dewatering. So, construction dewatering is the dewatering on construction site. Then what is this permanent groundwater control? Permanent stoppage of flow of water within the ground can be termed as permanent groundwater control. So, permanent groundwater control is the permanent stoppage of flow of water within the ground. Now we have to study the differences. First one, construction dewatering. It is a separation or taking out water from particular construction site. The purpose of construction dewatering is to control subsurface hydrologic movement in such a way to permit construction activities in dry environment. It involves temporary lowering of groundwater table at the construction site to permit subsurface constructions. It is required only at the time of construction. So it is a dynamic process, example, during excavation of foundations, excavation of lift pits, etc. We are using construction dewatering. Next is permanent groundwater control. It is the permanent stoppage of flow of water within the ground. The purpose of permanent groundwater control is to prevent entry of water in groundwater constructions during and even after construction activities are over. It blocks the flow of groundwater without interfering with groundwater table. It is required during and even after the construction. So it is a static process and example for permanent groundwater control is area of mining tunnel, basements, subways, etc. So the diff main differences between construction dewatering and permanent groundwater control is that co construction dewatering is a dynamic process whereas the permanent groundwater control is a static process. In case of construction de uh, dewatering, it involves the temporary lowering of groundwater table but in case of permanent groundwater control, it does not interfere with the groundwater table. And the construction dewatering is required only at the time of construction, but permanent groundwater control is required during construction and after the construction. Next is the process of dewatering. First of all, the first step is to collection of water, second step pumping of water, third step filtering and removal of silt and impurities and the last step discharge of this water at certain particular locations. So it is a four step process which includes collection of water, pumping of water, filtering and removal of silt and impurities, 
discharge of this water at certain proper locations. Methods of dewatering First method is active dewatering. There are three methods of dewatering. They are active dewatering, interception dewatering and isolation dewatering. Among them, the first one is active dewatering. That is controlling the groundwater by pumping. It is again subdivided into some pumping. Installation of sums within the excavation from with which the water entering the excavation can be pumped out. Second one is deep wells. A series of bore wells which serves as the pumps of submersible pumps for uh, lifting the water out or for pumping the water out. And the third one is well point system. It is a system consists of a series of small diameter tubes for pump pumping the water from the excavation. And the last one is horizontal wells. It uses a horizontal flexible perforated pipe pumped by a well point pump to lower the groundwater level. So the active dewatering is subdivided into four different techniques such as sump pumping, deep wells, well point system and horizontal wells. The second method is interception dewatering. It intercepts the flow of surface water or ground water by preventing it from getting into the excavation site. It is again subdivided into spillways around coffer dams, grout curtain. It is used under dams to prevent the seepage erosion and to reduce the leakage through the dam foundations. And the third one is interceptor drain. So the interception dewatering. It is mainly done by means of spillways, grout curtain and interceptor drain. And the third type of dewatering is isolation or exclusion dewatering. Here the groundwater can be excluded from the working area by a very low permeability physical cutout of wall or barrier installed around the perimeter of the excavation. So it is also known as exclusion dewatering. It is again divided or subdivided into steel sheet piling. It is an earth retention technique that retains the soil using steel sheet section with interlocking edges. Second one is coffer dam which is a temporary structure constructed to allow the enclosed area to be pumped out. Third one freezing. Here the state of the water is changed from liquid state to solid state that the water that is the water changes from liquid state to ice and the fourth one is grouting in this technique a particular fluid is injected into the ground to improve the ground properties that is to decrease the permeability of the soil a particular fluid is injected into the ground so there are three types of dewatering techniques they are active dewatering interception dewatering and exclusion or isolation dewatering Here I am giving you certain assignment questions. You have to do this and submit by today or by tomorrow itself. The questions include with neat sketches you have to in, uh, describe the following uh, different techniques used for dewatering that is some pumping, deep wells, horizontal wells, gout curtain, interceptor drain, steel sheet piling, copper dams etc. You have to explain the features of these particular techniques, advantages and disadvantages of these particular techniques and their operation mode with the neat sketches. Okay, uh, we are moving to the conclusion part. So today we have studied about what is hydraulic modification and the technique used for hydraulic modification is dewatering or drainage. You have studied what is dewatering, the definition for dewatering. That is, dewatering means it is the process of separation of water from the soil mass or it is the process of removal of water from the saturated soil mass 
and then you have studied about the importance of dewatering. Dewatering is used for various purposes such as ground excavation, for stabilizing foundation materials, for irrigation purposes, etc. Then you have studied the purpose of uh, dewatering during the construction stage and after the construction stage. Then you have studied the difference between the construction dewatering and permanent groundwater control. Construction dewatering is a dynamic process whereas permanent groundwater control is a static process. Construction dewatering is only required at the time of construction but the permanent groundwater control is required during construction and after construction. Construction dewatering it lowers in case of construction dewatering it lowers the groundwater level but in permanent groundwater control it does not interfere with the groundwater table. And after that you have studied the process of dewatering. Uh, the four stages process of dewatering that is collection of water, pumping of water, filtering and removal of silt and other materials and discharge of water to the particular proposed location. And in the last uh, area you have studied about the methods of dewatering. There are three chief methods for dewatering. They are active dewatering, interception dewatering and isolation or explosion dewatering. So hoping that you have understood uh, the portion. Write the assignment question and submit it by today or tomorrow itself. Okay, thank you for listening to me. Have a nice day. Stay safe.